What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about gripping the pistol. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back guys. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If you could please go ahead and hit the like button. As you're well aware, YouTube likes to suppress firearms related content, but their algorithm helps push videos that get a lot of likes. So please like this video and all other firearms content videos you watch just to keep them relevant. So let's dive in and let's talk about grip. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh great, another YouTube hack who's going to tell me stuff that people better than him at shooting have said in other YouTube videos. And that's not entirely wrong, except for the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you is from podcasts, and I'm going to let the uh, experts speak in their own words. So what I've done is I've taken some clips from some podcasts that I've listened to and kind of strung them together, edited over with match video of the people actually shooting to kind of share with you guys something that's come to light through listening to a lot of people talk about the same thing. One thing that's important about learning is you can hear a concept presented one way and you think you get all of it, but it really takes hearing the same concept approach from different angles before you really begin to understand what's being spoken about. So um, that's what happened with me through the Firearms Nation podcast with Arik Levy. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to the Firearms Nation podcast, please go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present clips from three podcasts that Firearms Nation has put out in the chronological order of which I heard them. They kind of seeded a concept, expanded on that concept, and then really got into the granular details. And then finally, a video that kind of stitches it all together. If you're just here for the tip, you can just jump to the last three minutes or so of the video. I'm going to go ahead and make the promise that if you actually input what I am going to share with you here. It's going to make your index off the draw faster. You're going to control recoil. The sights are going to track straight up and down better. So that is the promise of the video and let's kind of dig in. Now I encourage you not to skip the last three minutes. You should listen to all of these people in their own words presenting this, these tidbits on grips. So the first podcast that we're going to be listening to is from Yong Lee. And if you're not familiar with Yong Lee, he is a SWAT instructor, USPSA four-time Grand Master. And the link for his podcast is going to be down in the description of this video. You should listen to it. Uh, he's in Arik Levy's uh, Shooter Summit, an annual kind of pay-per-view podcast that he puts out every year that is well worth the price of admission. So let's hear what Yong has to say in his own words on the subject of grip and recoil management. I don't really grip the gun hard, hardly at all anymore. It's really interesting. I really have a soft grip on the gun. I, I don't, I just realized I don't need it. I used to power the gun so much that I would warp the grip on a, like a SPI, STI, you know? And I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I, I, I manage the gun by joint manipulation, locking out the wrist. But when you're yeah. locking out the wrist, you're not squeezing hard down on the gun. Well, I'm, I'm firm gripping, but I'm probably 50% less uh, gripping the gun compared to what I used to do when I was younger. And I thought when I was younger, I needed to do that. And it works, but it, it, it uh, prevents me from being in the subconscious sometimes because I'm gripping so hard, I'm thinking about it. Right. So I ease up on the grip now and I manipulate the joints. So, you know, think about this. If, you, if the gun doesn't, if, you're, if your wrist doesn't move back and forth and you're able to do that without gripping so hard, a couple of things happen. You can relax better. And you can manage the trigger faster and with more precision. So the last couple of years, I've been really working on, you know, not necessarily intentionally even, it just kind of happens that I really manipulate the joints and so that I don't have to grip as hard. And I teach that with the department. I actually ran that training format with the in-service uh, to everybody in my department. And it actually was amazing. There were people who were shooting faster than me young guys who don't compete granted these were like you know five yard shooting but a small target and they're shooting faster than me and able to manage the trigger manage the the recoil where the gun is not moving and it's strictly by joint manipulation not allowing the wrist to move 
This is the first time I'd ever heard anyone say how hard you grip the gun doesn't matter. You have probably already seen the videos with Bob Vogel and him torquing down on the gun and squeezing the life out of it, and that's been the prevailing wisdom from pretty much everybody I've listened to on grip up until now. But if you watch that video of Yong Lee, he's not having any issue holding the muzzle down, and he's saying it's more coming from the joints than it is your actual grip strength, and he doesn't grip near as hard as he used to. So that kind of seeded something in my mind and I started thinking about my grip a little bit differently based on that. Now, uh, it really didn't get the old uh, wheels a turning until we listened to Eric Grafell, who is, if you don't know the name of Eric Grafell, he is an Ipsic uh, champion. He has been basically undefeated his entire adult life and I can say, and it's not hyperbole at all, he's the best pistol shooter alive. So he was interviewed by Ark Levy on the Firearms Nation podcast uh, as well, and this is what he had to say about grip. Uh, and uh, and actually, that um, teacher who said, "Okay, you have pain here, pain there. So, is there any other muscle we can use? What can we do?" So we came up, so we start reading and, and so on, and and watching different techniques. And I said, "Okay, let's do the weaver thing. Back what they were doing back in the days, transform to uh, a, a triangle position." Is that achievable? Yes or no? Yes, it was. And then try to uh, to optimize the system, see what uh, how we can do in it. It really it really changed my life. Now I do need to provide a little bit of context. Eric was looking for a grip that was more efficient that he could use to train with high round count volumes. He was getting serious about his shooting and wanted to crank up his training. So he started looking for new ways of gripping the pistol, which led him to his push-pull method that he talks about. I don't really understand the push-pull method, but he does say it's kind of like Weaver, which would be pushing out with your palm and pulling back with your support hand, but maybe not doing the elbows down because he doesn't do it in that clip he saw. Now, one thing that does resonate with the push-pull was something I was kind of coming through with on my own, which was that you really got to force the web of your hand hard into the back strap of the gun. The push made sense. And kind of the restraining it with the fingers also makes sense to me. I do understand that. But that, I mean, pulling back, or am I pulling back with my form? I don't know. I never really kind of spent too much time thinking about it, but it did open up the concept because, again, He's talking about forcing in the back of the gun, so that sounds like it's probably a good idea. It's pretty consistent with what everyone has been saying so far. And the other benefit of the pressing into the back of the gun and pulling on the front strap of the grip is it makes the sights track straight up and down. You want the sights to bounce straight up and down and not up and to the right, which is probably what's happening if you don't have a dot. You're just not aware that it's going up and right because it comes back down low and left. So uh, getting the gun to go straight up and down is obviously the goal. See what else he has to say. I mean, how I, I don't squeeze. I mean, I can have pressure, but I'm not squeezing it. That gives you a very loose finger, then, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It allows That's you to point. go fast. But do you find that the gun movement is is more than if you were just really pushing down on that gun? No, no, not at all. Not at all. It's the um, no. The gun, the gun, of course, moves anyway, no matter what. But because of the pressure push and pull, the, gu the gun is is in, in, in the vise. But instead of having the vise sideways, you have it in, in the same way that is the motion. So maybe it kicks harder, I would say. That is maybe true. It kicks. But it doesn't flip. It doesn't, it doesn't lift that much. So the, the return side is much quicker, I believe. But like, um, how to say, it's like, um... Again, it's a top shooter talking about not using much grip strength in his hand, getting the gun to track straight up and down. If you look at the video, the gun does not jump into his hand. He's holding it pretty flat. Uh, and what's more interesting about this is Eric Grafell is not a big guy. Some of these handgun techniques only work for bigger guys or smaller guys or whatever. But Eric's not even six foot tall, whereas Young is over six foot and probably over 200 pounds. Eric's a much smaller guy, but he seems to manage the recoil with no problem as well. And so... Moving on from there, a few weeks later, uh, Arik dropped the gold mine that was the interview with Juan Sik Kim. If you're not familiar with Juan Sik Kim, he is a USPSA competitor 
who has been diligently studying the game for about the past five years. He's come in second twice behind Max McShell at Optics Nationals for the past two years, uh, 2017 at 99% and 2018 just recently at 97%. So he is a legitimate shooter in his own right. And Juan Sik had this to say. And there's so many misconceptions, misconceptions out there for recoil management. Uh, a lot of people say grip harder. And when I hear that, what do you mean grip harder? Like, should I just grip harder and harder and harder and harder endlessly and just work on my grip strength and do, do I control the recoil the best? Then, of course, uh, Olympic lifters or bodybuilders will probably shoot better than me in terms of recoil management. But it was not true. So uh, I was thinking, how, how can I master recoil management? And also, how can I teach people how to master recoil management? So, of course, there's theory behind it. So again, more grip strength doesn't sound like what the key is to make the gun track flat. It sounds like maybe the key is probably in the joints, but he had more to say. There's no left or right movement. But... A lot of people, when they shoot, when they shoot especially fast, a lot of people see left shots or right shots. And if you're a right-handed shooter, and if you usually grip harder with the left hand, because right hand, you have to pull the trigger, uh, most commonly, your shots go right, because left hand is gripping usually harder. So that's that was most common issue, horizontal variation when you shoot fast. Uh, but if you just don't apply side to side force, or if you apply perfect 50 50 left to right force, then the gun won't move side to side. That's the physics behind it. So, by science, there's no left to right variation if you don't touch it. Now, if you grip it, you either have to exert zero amount of force left to right, or exactly 50-50, then it, it will be equilibrium. So then you will not shoot left to right shots. That was one concept I learned. So uh, now when I grip the gun, my grip pressure, oh, by the way, when I say grip, I'm not talking about the wrists or elbow, other components, uh, or I'm not talking about forearm muscle or bicep or anything like that. I'm only talking about the hand part, hand. When I say grip, it's just a hand. So my pressure is front to back of the gun. So front, front of the grip and back of the grip of the gun. I am not gripping side to side. No force at all. No force at all. So uh, that was kind of tricky to change because last year in before, I was gripping side to side. I was clamping the gun side to side. Uh, I'm not saying there wasn't any front to back force, but I had all the force all around the gun, mostly left to right. And then I redirected that to front to back. That means if you're not gripping hard enough, the gun will flip around your hand. But if the gun doesn't flop around inside your hand, the grip's job is done. The rest of the job or rest of the flip comes from your joints. So so that so then if I say grip harder when the gun is not moving inside the hand, grip harder doesn't necessarily make you better in recoil management. But a lot of people when they grip hard, they try to use arm muscles too. So that can happen to be locking your wrist together. But if you grip harder than necessary, it's not good because you're going to be fatigued and you can also uh, exert extra forces that doesn't help recoil management. So if you're going to be fast, you need to keep the, the trigger finger loose, Juan Six says. And if you know anything about being fast, then it's really a study of efficiency. And it's, Juan Six speaks to that in the video where he talks about using the right amount of force and not more force. 
Now, elsewhere in the podcast, Wansick talks about going to a physical therapist. Uh, he's mentioned it in other interviews I've heard with him. Uh, and he talks about muscle control and how that happens. So uh, controlling the elbow comes from the triceps predominantly and the controlling of the wrist comes from the forearm. So that is playing into kind of the joint locking thing that we're talking about here. So all of that's probably an important piece. Now, all of these guys, all, all the three guys you've heard so far have all said that a looser grip isn't necessarily a bad thing, but they all managed to hold recoil down, which kind of flies in the face of convention. They all agree pretty much that you should be applying firm pressure to the back and you should be restraining on the front strap, all pressure on the pistol being applied front to back and not pinching in. It wasn't really until I saw the following video with Ron Avery of the Tactical Performance Center that all of this started to fall into place. He has a technique that he calls the pliable grip method, and I took a clip from his video that I'll present to you now. <laughs> Pretty solid. Yeah, it doesn't feel like nothing until you try to pull your hands out. So, dang, I hate that. Now it's your turn. You're going to grip my hand rigid, <laughs> hard. Okay. Yeah. Oh, come on, you didn't even <laughs> grab it. <laughs> grab that thing like you mean it. Stiff hand. Hard! See okay, now. Squish. Soft. Squish. Hold the squish. Pull that arm in. Pull it in with your fingertips. You roll your elbows in. You take your squish away. Now squish it in. Put your hands together. Squish it in. And hold that squishy feeling. That's what you're trying to create with the gun. So if you notice, the kid uh, was unable to pull his hand away from Ron's grip, and Ron's grip reportedly didn't feel like he was squeezing very hard on the kid's hand, uh, whereas the kid was trying real hard to squeeze on his hand, and Ron was able to pull it away no problem. Uh, the difference when the kid's able to successfully do it is Ron kind of fixes how he's holding his elbows, and he's basically telling you to squish in with your palms, keeping them relaxed, and then using your fingers to restrain, which sounds a lot like uh, pushing in with your palms on the back strap and sides of the gun while pulling back with your fingers, but the extra step of keeping your palms kind of soft for great uh, traction on the gun. And he goes on to say this in the following video. What we call the pliable hand. And what happens is when you start to learn any grip, you overexert. And when you overexert, you make your hand rigid. The muscles underneath the skin become rigid. And if you look at ice on the side of a building, if you hit it with a hammer, it breaks off because it's brittle. And it doesn't have that surface tension to stay connected if it's hit with a sharp blow. Well, that gun fires. It's a pretty sharp recoil, right? It's a quick snap, and it can break your contact of your skin loose with the side of the gun. So what we try to do is if we, when we make our hand rigid, we are essentially becoming a rock. No matter how hard we squeeze, it's going to move, right? And if I let go, it's going to fall off. So we take our handy dandy biscuit dough, okay, a little bit of biscuit dough, nice and sticky. And that's our loose pliable hand that when I squeeze it on and hold it, it's sticking to me. If I stick it on there and hold it nice and there, it stays on, it's pliable. And when I move it, it just slides back and forth, like gum. It's really gummy, really sticky, holds on there. And you can see it's not breaking loose. Stay in there, it's attached. You can see the adhesion. And if, if, I, if the gun's moving and it's, it's pliable, the muscles underneath are allowing it, the skin is adhering to your gun. That's what you're trying to achieve with your hand. You're pulling it in strongly, but relaxing this portion, pulling it in and squishing your hand against the gun, like bubble gum, like goo. Okay, so from there, if I were to put that on the side of this gun and have that feeling of stickiness at the top here, squish it in, hold it there. Now when the gun moves, it's not going anywhere, it's connected. So there it is again, guys. The fingers basically pull back on the front strap while the palms kind of squish into the gun. Uh, when you do this, you're not using a ton of grip strength, but you are using some grip strength. Uh, it keeps the trigger finger loose. So we're going to actually do the dry fire drill now. Uh, I need you to go ahead and ensure that your pistol is unloaded. We're going to do this with unloaded pistols and do a bit of dry fire. 
Okay, first things first, we're going to talk about grip. If you don't know how to grip a pistol yet, you're going to grip it my way for the purposes of this exercise. Um, just no excuses, no anything. Just try and grip it my way uh, and see if you can make it work for you. It may not work for you, but this is basically how you build a grip on a competition pistol. It's called the thumbs forward grip. So you're going to get as high as you can in the grip tang and up under the trigger guard. You're leaving a nice pocket right there. You're leaving your thumb up because you're awesome. Now, this hand is going to come in and it's going to build a grip on the nice open pocket there. So you're going to start by putting your hand at the back of the grip, then wrapping your fingers around. You don't want to necessarily do like this like Bob Vogel does. We're just going to do a nice neutral grip where the heel kind of digs in right there on the back strap. That's what we're going for. So that's where it is. My hands aren't hitting any of the controls. You can see the slide stop's good to go. There's a nice pocket around my uh, magazine release when I do it this way. So that's how we're going to be building the grip. Now my thumb's going to fold down and it's going to land on this. The thumbs are not doing anything. All of the pressure is being applied front to back. I'm not putting any side to side pressure on my grip really other than sinking my palm onto the frame of the gun right there. So there we have it. That's how we're going to be building our grip. That's the thumbs forward grip and that's what we're going to be doing. But first, I need you to present to a target, doesn't matter what the target is, it can be a light switch, it can be a wall plate cover, whatever you happen to have around the house. I need you to draw to that target the way that you present the gun every single time. This is going to be a baseline. I need you to notice you don't have to pull the trigger, just come from the holster and see how long roughly it feels like it takes for you to have a solid sight picture that you're settling on. So just do it your way a bunch of times. I'll wait. So. Now you're going to try it my way. So we're going to build the grip like we talked about with the thumbs forward grip. We come out of the holster and we're going to do what Ron Avery is suggesting. So we're going to smush our palms into the back of the gun. We're going to roll our elbows out about as much as they can. It starts to feel uncomfortable. We're going to focus on what we're aiming at with our elbows rolled all the way out. Now with the elbows rolled out, we're pushing in on the gun with our pliable grip, pushing in on it. and. It, you're kind of as you roll your as you roll your elbows out, your wrists are going to feel like they want to turn out. So you're going to end up cinching in on the gun evenly through doing through rolling your elbows out. You should not feel tension in your traps. If you go like this, then you're shrugging your traps. You don't want that tension. So as you roll your elbows out, then lift the gun up to your eye. Don't drop down behind the sights, but lift the gun up to your eye. Roll your shoulders out if you have to to get the tension out of your shoulders, and just keep your elbows rolled out and you can feel tension in your wrists and a little bit in your elbows and then that's what we're doing at and you're basically pointing with your entire upper body it's like a tank turret um, everything is lined up your this part of your hands should feel like they're trying to press in together through the pistol and that's really what's going to line it up so right now my dot is sitting hard on my front sight and i'm not even aiming i'm just holding on to the pistol and the sights are lined up so if you do this there's a good chance that your sights are going to be lined up too. So this is a really kinesthetic thing. It's all about feeling. So I need you to sit there and I need you to get the, get the gun right. Get your elbows right. Get your shoulders right. Feel it. Really feel it. If you want to go for bonus points, you can even sink down, put your butt behind your heels and kind of lean forward. And that's going to be a good stance. Uh, if it doesn't look cool, Maybe ask your kids for some tips to make it look cool. We are doing action pistol shooting here and it's really important to look cool. Kidding aside, you do want to sink down in the stance and that's going to make you straighten your spine like you're going to be doing a barbell squat. You should have like a hollow stomach is what they say and everything should just feel nice and loose. And you're not really gripping hard with your fingers. You're just holding onto the pistol, rolling your elbows out like we talked about. So that's what we're doing there. Now, you remember how long it took you to get your sight picture on what you were drawing to. Really feel your elbows, feel your shoulders. Now I want you to practice drawing a few times, just thinking about your elbows and how it felt. And as you bring the gun up, you'll see that the sights pretty much line up on whatever it is you're aiming at, and you don't have to clean up the sights much. You should notice the sights come up faster and you get on target a little bit quicker. The dot settles down a lot faster for me when I do this technique and I don't have to steer the sights at all. I bet that's going to be the case for you iron sight shooters as well. So uh, the other nice thing, and it's going to take a little bit of ammo when you do this, but 
when you, it's a very balanced grip. It's a very neutral grip. So uh, another tip Juan Six said is pressing up on the trigger guard with the not your index finger underneath that. So you kind of push up on the trigger guard with that bit of your finger. You get nice locked out elbows where you're mushing your pliable uh, grip onto the gun and shoot. If you go and shoot that way, you'll notice the sight should track straight up and down, especially if you have a dot gun, it's very easy to see. Uh, your finger should be able to move real fast on the trigger because you're not using a ton of grip strength. But that's basically how we're going to be gripping pistols in 2018. Now, uh, some things you can do to practice it, just coming straight out of the holster and presenting to a target. You can already have the gun out of the holster and come into position and do that and just see how quickly you can find the dot. If you're a dot shooter, this will help you find the dot because the sights are already lined up. So that's what I got for you guys this time. Uh, if you like this format of video, let me know. Uh, if you have questions, if it doesn't work for you, let me know what you see. I really am interested in hearing if you guys did get a chance to try this, what your results were. Uh, you will spend some ammo trying to get the dot to jump straight up and down using the pliable grip method. But as always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.